Hello! Today we are going to start quarter one, week seven, of which I'm calling Cause You Can, 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 because we are going to make a can this week. And by making a can, we're going to learn a little bit about symmetrical cylindr cylindrical mo modeling and intermediate UV mapping in Autodesk 3D Studio Max 2014. We're also going to learn some basic photo and diffuse map manipulation in Photoshop so we can create the material. Now, <clears throat> this is our first day, so um, we are going to focus today on modeling the can. And so we're going to talk about downloading the files that we need to build the can. We're going to actually start building the, con the soda can using concept art. Uh, we're going to review how we create the initial cylinder and what frame we do that in. And we're actually going to model the can using select and scale, extrude, bevel, chamfer, insert loops, etc. Then we're, we're going to learn about new selection methods that we can use in order to get exactly the faces we want when we use those sub-object modifiers. <clears throat> and finally, we're going to use smoothing groups to try and make the can look nice and smooth where it should. All right. So that's our goal for today. The first thing we should talk about is the three assets you're going to need. In the uh, information attached to the video, you'll find a link to download these three assets. We've got the can label, the orthographic view, and the top view of the, the can, and we're going to use that for the material. Okay, so now, today, as I said before, we're just going to focus on modeling. So, we're going to start out with our Mac start file, like we always do. Uh, if you don't have this Mac start file, you can find one uh, in an earlier tutorial, download that, and I'll, I'll, I go through where to put it. So go ahead and do that now, and come back when you've got that original Mac start file because in this Mac start file we have in our front view I'm going to hit F we have a plane in the background called reference front it's already there and ready for us to put our material on so we can model from it we also have one in the left view and we have one in the top view now we're just going to use the left and the front today and realistically we only need one but we're not going to need this top one at all so you can highlight that one by clicking on it and hit delete so we don't need that top view and that's the tan one and then from the front uh, we're going to actually get the material uh, and put it on there so you're going to open up your material editor by pressing M and you'll notice that I have the compact material editor uh, if you're using slate material editor that's fine I'm going to be using the compact material editor which you can select right up here under modes. Now the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take this material that's already here and put it in a swatch because we can already see through this, it's already blue, it's actually already named. So we're going to get that material by selecting this first swatch right here, 0, 01 default. I'm going to use this eyedropper called pick material from object. Okay, I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to click the cube. And that'll give me this sort of blue see-through material that we're going to use to model. You can even see it's already called modeling material. That's great. Because that way we can see through our, our object into the orthographic view that we're going to be building this thing from. All right, in the second swatch, I'm going to click on that now, we're going to create our orthographic material. Okay, that's, that's our reference material. We can actually start by changing it to reference material all right oops reference material all right that's good and now what we're going to do is we're going to open up that folder we had earlier and we're going to drag our can underscore ortho into it okay we'll click that click and drag it over now it should turn red so we're gonna, now we can minimize this window come back here and I'm going to take this and drag it onto this back reference this front reference plane now you'll notice, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit with the middle mouse button. Um, you'll notice it's really not like our art. Our art is a skinny looking normal, somewhat normal can. This, this, uh, this new image is way too thick. So what we want to do is we want to change the, the resolution or the size of this 
object or this plane to make sure it matches the resolution of our picture. That way we know it's not getting stretched or skewed or anything like that. So our orthographic can is dimensions are 300 across by 520 up and down. That's pixels, right? We'll just transfer that directly into the object. I can close this window. I can click on this reference plane, go to the reference uh, to the material, I'm sorry, the modify tab, and over here you see the length. So length and width. So we know width is going to be 300, so I'm going to type in 300 there. And then I believe the size or the length will be the height. So we said that's going to be 520, which makes it much bigger. So I got to click my middle mouse button and roll out a little bit so it fits. We'll check that again. I think it was 520. Yes, 520. All right, cool. So we're going to do that for the front, which we just did. Now we're also going to do it for the left. So hit L and we're going to drag our material. You can click up here or hit the M hotkey. Drag that onto, not not the cube, but onto the reference left. And we're going to resize that. I'm going to click it and resize it to 520 and 300. Cool. Now, I'm going to zoom out again with that, with the middle mouse button. Cool. <clears throat> so now what we've got is we've got our left reference plane set up and our front reference plane set up. So I can swap back and forth by pressing F and L. They look the same size. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move them a little bit because I really like to build things so that the object itself is sitting on uh, on the zero plane. We have the zero line here and the zero line here and I want to make sure that this can is going to be sitting on the zero horizontal line. So I'm going to move that and watch where it lands. It looks to me like it's landing right at down here, it says 248, uh, it's at 248.099, so I'm just going to round that off to 248, and look down here to make sure that it looks good, it looks like it's sitting right on the line, that's perfect, so that's my front view, I'm going to hit L, click on the plane again, and just type in the Z transform button down here, 248, and it'll jump right up. Now you'll notice it's X position is this X position for this uh, is at 5,000 and that's because my modeling will be done there and these have to be way far away so they're not in our way when we're trying to work. So I'm going to hit F again to zoom in. Now I don't need this cube at all so I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm going to delete that cube just by hitting the delete key. And I'm going to hit T for top and we're getting ready to build our cylinder. The reason we build the cylinder in the top view, and I'm going to go to the Create tab right now, is so that when we build it, we are going to build it like this and like that, and then it's circular in the direction we want it to be. So see how it's already sort of the can shape? Now, we want to be a little more accurate than that, so from the top view, I'm going to hit S. S toggles our snaps, which are up here. You can click them, or you can hit S and it toggles on and off. Okay. So when I hit S, my snaps turn on. Now my snaps are actually snapping. You can right click on the snaps toggle up here. My snaps themselves are actually snapping to grid points like this, vertices or vertex, which would be vertex on an object, and grid lines. So I can actually zoom in and actually get it to snap to grid lines. Okay. Also while we're here, just in case you just started this video series, you can go to options, Make sure that translation enable access constraints is set. That makes your life much easier by making sure that when you grab one arrow in the widget, it only moves along that arrow. It's absolutely crucial, and I cannot recommend it enough. Make sure that's turned on. I wish it was automatically turned on. I don't know why it's not, but it is what it is. So we've got our snaps, and we're going to close this. So you should have a little gold uh, crosshair following your cursor. I'm going to go all the way to the center at 0, 0, and you can see down here that I'm at 0, 0, 0 right there. I'm going to left click using cylinder. I'm going to left click and drag out. Okay? I'm going to drag out about that big because I feel like it. And I'm going to let go and then push up. 
Now notice if I pull down, you can see the grid, but if I push up, the grid goes away. That's because if I pull down, the cylinder is being created downwards. But if I push up, the cylinder is created up. And that's what we want. So I'm going to hit front and see what how my cylinder is looking. All right, so it's way too small. It's got a bunch of other problems, but for now that's fine because it started at zero, zero, zero. So its position is in the right spot. Its heart is in the right place. We just need to give it some more love. So I'm going to hit W to use the move tool. And I'm going to move it up. Oh, snapping is on. I have to hit S to turn off snapping. And you don't even have to stop moving it to do that. You can turn snapping on and off while you move it. So I hit S to turn off snapping. And I'm going to try and put this right about there, which is right about the time when it flattens out to be a straight line. And then from here, I'm going to need to expand this out. Now today we're going to be doing a lot of work with a cylinder, which makes a lot of sense. Whenever we adjust the size or scale of a cylinder, we need to make sure, hitting the R tool for scale, that we're constantly working in this center triangle, okay, which scales the cylinder in all directions. If we move it in just one direction, we don't it may look fine from the front like this, but from the top that's not what a Coke can looks like, so we can't have that, right? So we need to make sure whenever we scale this, the, our cylinder, our Coke can, we're scaling it from this center triangle. Even this triangle, whoops, that's the center, even from this outside triangle, it looks fine, right? I'm going to move it like that, but then when I look at it, it's oval. That's not good, okay? I just hit Control-Z to undo. Now, from the front view, we can also go into the Modify tab, and under Parameters of our cylinder, there's a radius. Now we can adjust our radius and get to the number exactly how big this thing needs to be. Well, I can't really see through my object, right? It just, it's not going to let me, I suppose. Um, so what I need to do is I need to make sure that, is this thing mine? Yeah. Um, is I need to add my modeling material to my cylinder. So I'm going to hit M bring up my materials, click and drag this modeling material over, and that lets me see through. So now, if I adjust this and it's way too big, I can at least see, hey, this thing's too big. So I'm going to pull that back down and get to there. Where are we at? That looks pretty good there, and that looks close enough. So we're going to go with it. Okay, so I'm going to say the radius is 126. Okay. So my 126 radius is a good start. Now my height is obviously way too small, right? I could scale it up like this, but I prefer to actually adjust the height this way. Okay, so now my height goes to right about the time it starts squeezing in. Now I just realized that earlier when I was showing you guys the scaling tool, I may have made a mistake. So let me just do that once again really quick. From the top, snapping is on. All right, I'm going to go into my Create tab, Cylinder, Expand Out, Push Up. I'm going to go into my Front tab, and I'm going to move this up just a little bit, turn snapping off until where it flattens out. Okay, now I'm going to scale that out. It's about right there. Grab my modeling material, drag it on there, and close it. Now, 135 seems to be the sweet spot. Okay. Now I'm going to adjust the height so that it flattens out right there. All right. So now what we've got is we've got a cylinder that looks about the right height. And it's circular. By holding Alt and Middle Mouse button, I can adjust it there. So from front, I've got that going well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adjusting the top part of the can. Or actually, I need to adjust some of the can parameters first. Number one, all these extra edges in the middle, we don't need those. So we're going to get rid of them. Okay, so under height segments over here, we're going to right click on the spinner and that takes it down to one. OK, 
Okay, we could just have pressed up and down and that would have been fine, but right clicking is fastest. For cap segments, I'm going to add one cap segment. All right, that way I've got this center area and we don't have an end gone on the top. And we're going to be able to use this central area to help you to help uh, sort of go through some of the other selection methods we're going to use today. So we're going to do that. Um, sides. You've probably heard me complain about sides before. 18 is a terrible number because it's not divisible by 4. The problem with numbers like 18 is that there's no center line along one of the directions. So in this case, along our y-axis, there's no center line that we can attach to. There's a center line here along our x-axis, but not on our y, and that's super frustrating. So we need a number that's divisible by 4. So we can use 16 or 20. You can use whichever one you want. Today I think I'm going to use 20, and hit enter. What that does is now we have a nice straight line that goes through the center on both sections, so we have nice quarters. This is really important because it allows us to have a center line we can snap to, just like that. Okay, so now we're going to convert this to an editable poly. So right click, go to convert to editable poly. When we do that, we get access to our sub objects over here. Now our sub objects are really cool. If you press the number one, you can get your vertex. Two is edge, three is border, four is polygon. So I'm going to use the polygon method, the four, and then holding, uh, using the select button, so Q, I'm going to marquee select across the top. Okay. Now as I did that, I just realized that I don't know if I froze my layers. I'm going to go ahead and go up into my manage layers and I didn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my reference layer in my manage layers tab and freeze it. That way I don't accidentally click on one of these back images. Okay, anyway, back to where we were. So I've got my cylinder which is my can. We can rename it now if you want. You're going to go into polygon and I'm going to select this top section. And then I'm going to deselect holding alt this middle section. Okay, what that does is it gives us just the top, which is really useful because now we can get just the top and it's much, much faster than trying to click on each one. Okay, inadvertently you just saw another way by holding shift and clicking two in a row gives you the ring. So, but you can't do that on the inside. So the reason I did this is I would select the entire top, hold alt, cut across the middle, and then I've got this big section here. Now, I really only want this center circle. I don't want this outside because I'm not going to do it. Now, I could hold Alt and do that and select, deselect things in chunks like this, but that's not super fast. So, what I'm going to do is we're going to learn about a new type of selection. All right? There's shrink and grow. Shrink basically takes all of your edges on the outside of whatever shape you made and it shrinks the entire selection like that which for us is perfect. Grow grows it out. You can imagine if I hit grow again, it's going to grab all of these side faces, but none of the bottom. Just like that. It's hard to tell, but the bottom is not selected. If I hit grow again, it'll get the first ring on the bottom. Now that this is the only part that's not selected. And if I hit it again, I'll get the whole thing. I can shrink. Now because I don't have anywhere to shrink from, it doesn't know what to do. So let's go through the whole process again. So left, all right. Grab all of it, deselect that, shrink it once. There we go. Now from the front, hitting F to go to front, I'm going to hit W, and I'm going to literally just pull these up. And I'm going to pull it up to about where this straight part starts. And we don't have to be 100% accurate, we're just going to ballpark it. Now I'm going to hit the R key and change it to select in uniform scale and I'm going to as we said before we have to we have to resize this from the center if you resize it from this it'll look fine in this direction but then it looks really bad the other way so from the front again I'm going to resize using the center triangle good now I've got this part of the can set up from the front now I'm going to extrude up now for me, I find that um, I can easily scrub this, which is basically 
left click and push uh, left, left click and drag up and down and you can resize it yourself if you have a problem with this like um, if you move it just a little bit and it moves drastically <clears throat> you can always just make it really large and then hit W and move it down to where you want it so either way is fine um, I'm gonna do that from now since that's what I just did alright so what I did is I just made the straight part of the can okay now we're going to do another sort of extrusion up and then we're going to bevel out the lip okay so I'm going to extrude settings again which is over here under edit polygons extrude settings okay now I'm only going to do it by 9.3 now I'm going to click this check mark button twice so that it knows that I'm for sure now I'm going to do what I call a laser selection. So I'm going to make sure I've got this rectangular selection region, right? I've got this rectangular selection, the box, you know, a marquee selection. Now I only want the faces on the center. So I'm going to take my box and instead of making a box, I'm going to try and keep it a line. And I'm going to take that line and cut just across the center of the faces. I'm not going to go above or below, just across. And what that does is it gives me the outside ring here which is what I want. I hit F to go forward again. Now, I'm going to use the bevel tool to sort of make a lip, okay, around the entire thing. All right, so bevel. Okay, now, initially it looks poor, right? It looks does not look good. This is not what we want because it bevels it in a like a very specific direction. It bevels it by group. We want to bevel by local normal. <coughs> so go ahead and click local normal and it'll change drastically immediately. Um, the height is how much of a lip you want. So according to our art, looks like four is a good number. And the amount of beveling is how much it's going to shrink on the inside or grow if you want it to get bigger. But for us, we're going to make it shrink. So I want to make it shrink by 1.5, 1.6. Yeah, I like six better. All right, it's very little difference, but whatever. So click the check mark. And we have now created the top part of our can. Now, I'm going to throw another material on there just so you, oops, just so you can see it. There. So you can see we've created the can, or at least something similar to the can. But what we need to do now is create like the indentation, because cans have these lips on them, like a little ridge around the inside where the, the pop top is. So I'm going to throw that back on there, go back into my Modify tab, and I'm going to <coughs> grab, actually I'm going to grow the selection until I get the top. Okay, I just grew it from the lip, so it got the entire top. Now from the front, I'm going to marquee select everything I don't want. So I'm going to hold Alt and deselect all of this, which leaves me with just the top. Okay. Here I'm going to click bevel settings under insert or under edit polygons, bevel settings, and I'm going to go from the left again and look at it. Except this time, local normal is fine, but I want to bevel it in, right? And I'm going to bevel it in by down by it looks like 16 is good, and I'm going to have the bevel settings down here. I want to make it maybe negative three. All right. That seems pretty good. All right. That looks pretty good. And you know what? Maybe I brought it down a little too much. I could always move it up a little bit. So it looks like that. Once again, when you're done, you can deselect polygon, go back into create mode, slap another material on it, and sort of get a look at it. Okay? So if I look from the left with a real material on it, I'm starting to get a real can. As a matter of fact, we're almost done. I'm going to now pull out the bottom down here. So let's do the same process. I'm going to go back here to my modeling. So left, I'm going to grab using polygon. I'm going to marquee select the bottom, deselect these center pieces. I'm going to shrink which gives me that rim, rim, and I'm going to hit uh, front. 
I'm going to move them down. All right? Now this time I'm going to try and scale them out from the center triangle again like that. And then I'm going to this time from here because I need to extrude this because I don't have any more edges to pull. So I'm going to extrude down settings wise. Actually, let's undo that. Whoa. go up here and do that. Okay, cool. So I'm going to extrude down. Oh, I have too many of them. There. Left. Okay. And then I'm, I'm going to cancel that. And I'm going to, instead of extrude, I'm going to bevel. Okay. I'm going to bevel down. Nope. Let's go back here. So I got messed up there. So from the left, I'm going to grab the bottom, deselect that section. I'm going to shrink. That's what I wanted to do. I undid too many times. I'm going to pull this down, and then I'm going to scale it out, okay, just like that. Once again, one of the things you've got to worry about here is being careful not to use the wrong type of resizing, because that will give you an egg shape or an oval shape, and we want to keep it circular. So front view. So we are going to extrude it out again. Right, bevel it out again, I mean. And once again, we're going the other direction. And bevel it in like that. OK, done. All right, so now we've got our bottom of our can. Now you'll notice that this can is actually curvy, right? It should curve, but mine doesn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an extra edge that runs right through here. And the way we do that is we go to Edge by clicking over here or pressing the number 2. And we can laser select across here and just get these edges. Now realistically, you could do it with just a couple edges. And go up here to uh, Loops. We're going to insert a loop. Okay, That creates more ge geometry for us to mess with. And then we can just literally, on, on the y-axis here, pull it straight down. Okay, so it's nice and straight and a little bit curvy, which is kind of what we want. Okay. Now, most the outside generally the can looks pretty good. If we want to get fancy, and of course we want to be fancy, we're going to go on the bottom here and create that sort of dent, almost like a little dish underneath. Most uh, soda cans have like this weird bubble on the inside, so we're going to try and do that too. So for polygon, I'm going to grab. Uh, luckily, I've got that already, so I'm going to go into left view. If I didn't, I could always grab these, deselect that, and that's what I get. Um, I could, so now I'm going to bevel again, all right, except this time from the left, instead of going uh, by that much, I'm just going to go, let's see, by about that much. So it looks like it'll be negative 1.5 and negative 4.5 for the outline. We can click OK. And that gives us a little bit of an edge to sit with. Now if I want that to be sort of a uh, little more smoother, I guess, I could snap the whole edge, that whole edge to the zero point. And I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to hit S for snap. I'm going to snap it down to the bottom. Okay, it should be snapped pretty much directly to the bottom, so it's nice and flat. Cool. I hit front again. Now this time I'm going to bevel it in again. Bevel it in. We can. This is that wonderful sort of like bubble we were looking for. Right, we're going to do that. Do it again. Except this time we're going to move that down a bit. Move it in a little bit. And click the little plus so we'll do it one more time. And I'm going to do that again. And we're done. 
what we've done is we've created like a little bubble down here that's allowing us to make it look like it's uh, concave, just a little concave. I'm going to turn snapping off by hitting S. I'm going to move that up so it's a perfect little bubble. Now you'll notice that um, my can, while pretty, has really kind of a sharp edge to it, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at possibly smoothing out these sharp corners. All right, and a good way to smooth out some of these sharp corners is by using the chamfer, a chamfer edge. Now, chamfer is really something you've got to be careful with because unless you're doing an entire loop, I don't. I, it's tough to use well because it can create a lot of weird geometry. Um, but we're going to go ahead and grab this loop here by double-clicking on an edge. If you double-click on an edge, and if it can, it'll make a loop. Um, and from there, we can go down to chamfer. Now, I'm going to go to chamfer settings left view and you'll notice what it's doing is it's basically taking that one edge and it's splitting it which is nice because it gives me nice uh, it, it makes the sort of edge not quite so sharp it makes it a little more rounded so I ended up moving it by about 3.5 and I only did one chamfer segment I could do two but then it, it gets really smooth which is nice so you could do that if you wanted to but I'm gonna leave mine at one then I click OK. I'm going to do the same thing down at the bottom to smooth that out as well. Double click and chamfer. I'm going to actually use the exact same settings. I'm not even going to mess with it. 3.5 and 1. And then hit OK. All right. So chamfer is great when you have a nice loop like that that you want to just smooth out. Um, but you got to be real careful about it because, like I said, if you try and chamfer a face, which it is possible, you can take a face like this and... Uh, Let's see, where to go? No, oh, no, I know what I was doing. If I grab an edge like this, and this, and this, and this, and I try and chamfer it, it creates these weird triangles, and it just becomes a mess real quick. So uh, you just got to really be a little careful with chamfer. All right, cool. So we've got our can. We've got our settings. Everything's done. All, all we need to do now is just finalize our our rendering. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the Create tab, and I'm going to my Material Editor, and I'm just going to drag whatever default gray is on there so I can sort of see, uh, hit P for perspective, and now I'm just going to render it real quick. Uh, hit F10 for Render Settings. I like to use, uh, right here where it says Output Size, I like to use HDTV Video, 1920 by 1080 which is the default. Click Render. And now you can see our render here, you can see I've got really hard edges, especially where I did the chamfering and all the extrusion. Um, and that's just not something that looks really good. Soda cans don't have these hard edges, so we need to do some smoothing. All right? We can do smoothing under the Properties section. So we're going to go back into our Modify tab, back into our Polygons. All right? Hit Front. I'm going to grab the entire middle section here. And now I need to decide where I want my edges to be hard or smooth. Right? So I want this entire section from basically all the way up here to all the way down there to be smooth. All right? I want it to be nice, smooth edges. I don't want any hard you know, creases in my tin can. Oh, aluminum, I suppose. So I've got this section. I'm going to go to Properties. There's a Smooth pull-down menu. Click on it, let go on just the pull-down, and Smooth Selected. Okay. You'll notice some of the shading changes. Now we can actually go in here, hit P for perspective. I'm going to render it again. You can see it looks much smoother down there, even though we didn't really look at that up here. Let's see how our chamfered edge looks. Render much smoother, much, much better. Okay, cool. Now, the top lip here I also want to be smooth. So I'm going to actually grab here and then hold Shift and click one of these edges next to it. What that does is automatically loop the entire section. Okay, and then from here I can grow like that. So I've set this so that it's, I've grown it. Now I don't want this to be a sharp edge, so I want to make sure that I get that as well. All right, so what I can do now is hit left and I can just marquee select it. Oops, undo that, hold control, 
control let me allow add will allow me to add to selection so I've got all that now what worries me is the fact that that's down there so I must have gotten something else yep I did got to be careful about that I accidentally I don't use ignore back facing very often um, so I have to be a little more careful about how I select things but I tell you what clued me off um, if you have the little widget and it's not in the center of what you think should be the center, then you've probably got extra edges. Either way, I'm going to take this whole section and I'm going to Properties, Smooth. Now, see the arrows are already there, so it's still smooth selected. So I can do that. And now I can render it. That looks nice. And the bottom. Let me see how that's looking. Blech. Need to fix that. All right, I'm going to turn the grid off by hitting G. G for grid. Uh, well, I hit the left button, although I could hit front, really doesn't matter. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole bottom section here and I'm going to deselect all of these here. So I'm going to hold Alt and deselect them all. There are faster ways to do this, but for now it will work. Okay. I want this to be smooth, but I want this inside stuff to be smooth separately. So once again, properties, smooth selected. And then for the inside, I'm actually going to turn ignore back facing on, hit Q to so I can grab stuff, and I'm going to marquee select just the center. Then I'm going to grow it out until I get to the edge, just like that. So I had to hit grow what, three or four times. And now I'm going to go to properties, smooth. All right, so now your can is basically done. You probably should have been saving all along. I didn't. That's naughty. Um, so we can save it now. Now's a great time to save it. Um, in, in my classroom, we always save things as uh, our period. So I'm going to go up to save. So I'm going to call this three. Uh, let's see, what, what period are we on? We're going to pretend like it's fifth period. So five underscore last name underscore whatever this is which is can and then it's a max file so we just leave it at that and hit save so we're ready you can render it should be nice and smooth should look good from multiple angles I'm gonna get out of this and back into create mode see that so that's our sweet looking can I hope you enjoyed it I hope you liked the tutorial and uh, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next step which we will add the UV modifier to this and move right along. Thanks for watching.